Hola YouTube, seguimos en Kingdom Come Deliverance y hemos ido al pueblo de Usiche para porque nos han dicho, nos dijo Panocha en el último vídeo que uno de ellos, uno de los que habían ido a asesinar a, al tío de los establos era de Usiche así que vamos a preguntar por aquí y creo que voy a ir directamente al cura que parece un tío que sabe cosas, un tío inteligente Voy a lavarme, a ver. Es que es importante lavarse, porque si no te lavas, la gente te mira mal y te habla mal. Entonces, aunque no he ido al sitio de los baños estos para hacer un lavado completo, pues al menos... Eh, pues al menos lavarme un poquito para no darle asco al cura. Ya comeremos, no te preocupes, primo. A ver, no tengo nada para comer. <risa> bueno. En fin... Vamos a hablar con el cura que estáis sentado y vamos a preguntarle por por los asesinatos estos y tal. My respects to you. Father, didn't I see you outside practicing swordplay? I wouldn't have expected that from a man of the cloth. With a stick. I practiced with a stick. A reminder of my youth and days gone by, and it helps keep me in good form. I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? What would you want with him? Well, it's no skin off my nose. The bastard has a cottage on the edge of the village by the road to Ratai. Vale, pues ya está. Ya sabemos dónde vive el tío este, Lubos, así que vamos a ir para allá. Sí que ha sido fácil, ¿verdad? <laughs> No, supongo es un pueblo pequeño, al final y todo el mundo se conoce. Bueno, no está tan cerca como pensaba. Está a las afueras de Usiche. A ver dónde está mi puto caballo. Ahí está. Guijarro es el, el caballo que te dan al principio. A ver. Sí, sí, sí. Vale. Esto es por aquí, ¿no? A ver. Por aquí abajo. Tiene pinta. Bueno, ya tiene que ser por aquí, ¿no? Que ya no... ¿Qué ves detrás de esta casa grandota? Uy, cuánta gente reunida ahí. Eso me trae mala espina, chicos. Mierda, vamos a ver qué ha pasado. ¿Qué ha pasado, primo? ¿Qué ha pasado? ¿Qué ha pasado, primos? I think this could be related. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz. And I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? One of the folk at the stud farm recognized someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. We have no bandits or murderers around here. Really? They say he had a limp? Shit. Well, allow me to introduce you. To Limpy Lubosch. Or all that's left of him. Oh. Oh, sacra. Oh, nothing 
things ever easy. I'll have to take a look around and ask a few more questions, if that's all right with you. You can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it. As for what else there is to find out, I don't know. But look and ask all you like. Who was Limpy Lubos? A poor crofter and a scoundrel. Can't say I'm too surprised what happened to him. He kept company with all sorts of vermin. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. Punch-ups in the tavern and what have you. How come he limped? He got that from some villainy or brawl a long time ago. Has he been up to anything suspicious lately? Hmm. I don't know. The last few days he didn't go anywhere. He was home the whole time. But he always kept everyone in the village at arm's length. Did he have any kith or kin in the village? None. A loner he was. I don't know the last time I saw him with anyone. Do you happen to know where he was on the night of the Neuhof raid? I've no idea. He kept his distance from other folk. You never knew if he was away or holed up at home. When did you find the body? And did anyone see anything? Just now. And nobody saw or heard anything. I don't know how they could gut him like that without someone hearing him scream. Oh, God damn it, my stomach hurts. My respects to you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lyper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course. Ask away. That man Lubos who was murdered, what was he like? He was a drunk who was always looking for a fight. Nobody liked him much, but I wouldn't wish an end like that on any man. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Well, now I think of it, I haven't seen him around for a while. No idea where he was skulking. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? Not a clue. Do you know anyone Lubosch used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? He was a loner. He didn't even have any mates in the tavern. That's all. Thank you. Marush, vamos a vamos a mirar aquí a ver si encontramos algo alguna pista o algo. Voy a cerrar por si a lo mejor podemos robar cositas también. A ver ahí está el cuerpo del tío este que han. What's this? Looks like someone's hit him very hard on the head. Could they have bludgeoned him to death and then gutted him? Al de este barrio hay que ser bestia también, eh. Lord of birth, they did a hell of a job on him. Must have been agony. O sea que primero le reventaron la cabeza y luego cuando ya estaba muerto le destriparon. Bueno, menos mal para él porque si lo hubieran destripado antes de cortarle la cabeza hubiera sido mucho más doloroso. Judas. This is meant to be a warning, but for who? Why? Maybe the gang had a falling out. The bandit who goes out to ride isn't something you see every day. Es verdad que es curioso. En aquella época casi nadie sabía escribir, solo los curas y, y los nobles, supongo. Mira, mira. Vamos a comer las lentejas del cadáver. <ríe> eh, al menos sirven para algo. Que si no se iban a pudrir ahí en el fuego porque nadie se las iba a comer. Así que todo bien. Vamos a investigar un poquito por aquí a ver si tenemos algo guay para coger. Examinar. Una cama, vale, perfecto. Gracias. <ríe> Gracias, Sherlock Holmes. <ríe> A ver. Abrir. Solo hay comida, no hay cosas guays. A ver. 
nada, lo mismo ahí hay algo más la misma mierda no tienes algo super guay, tío como yo que sé, una espada de fuego una ametralladora sería guay tener una ametralladora en este juego <risa> no te tosea ni cristo a ver Fuerza cerradura, bueno Aquí, bueno, mira, el queso que es caro Al menos me lo quedo y si acaso lo puedo vender mm. Y ya está, ¿no? No hay nada interesante A ver aquí, bueno, el snaps Bueno, voy a coger todo, qué coño Ya está Pues... Mmm, sí, pues sí Va, voy a intentarlo una vez, pero es que esto es dificilísimo, tío. Está más mal parido esta mierda, tío, que... Es que no se puede... Va, qué rabia, tío. Bueno, pues ahora vamos a buscar pistas, no sé, supongo que tendremos que preguntar a la gente. Es que ha sido todo Cristo. Solo queda el merino este. Hey, watch it. <risa> ¿Qué pasa? Folks, these days. ¿Qué pasa, primo? Esto ya lo hemos preguntado antes. Pues no sé, creo que lo que voy a hacer es ir otra vez al cura A ver si este cura puede decirme algo Ya que él sabía algo del tío este Y parece el, el único tío que sabe cosas Así que voy a cortar un momento Y aparezco cuando esté con el cura, ¿qué os parece? Venga, hasta ahora Bueno, ya estoy aquí en, el, en la iglesia Vamos a hablar con el señor cura A ver qué nos cuenta del, del tío este Que parece que, que esconde cosas Venga, Godwin, habla. The blessings of our good Lord be with you, Father. I'm here in the name of Sahanish of Lipa, investigating the massacre at Neuhof, which seems to be connected to a murder here. Can I ask you a few questions? It seems Sir Hanush is employing children as investigators. But ask as you wish, boy. I hope this nasty business will be cleared up quickly. Did you know Lubosh? What was he like? A bit of a lost soul. Simple, rough fellow, but at heart I don't think he was such a bad person. Did you notice anything suspicious recently? My child, all sorts of suspicious things have been going on recently. People like Lubos don't know what to do about it, and sometimes they do stupid things. That's really not a lot of help to me, Father. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you know what Lubos was doing on the day Neuhoff was raided? Unfortunately, I do know, and I'd like to help you with your investigation, but I can't. What? I'm bound by certain vows that forbid me to tell you. Vows more important than catching dangerous murderers? There are laws of God above the laws of man, son, and one of those is the sanctity of the confessional. Father, surely you can't be serious. There must be situations in which you can make an exception. There are things that apply always, no matter what the circumstances, and this is one of them. For heaven's sake, Father, can you really look me in the eye and tell me that, when you know you may be condemning innocent people to death? I can. Because if I broke that vow, the consequences would be much worse than if I didn't. Maybe not immediately, but one day, the mills of God grind slowly. Father, Lubosch was my only lead to the Neuhoff Raiders. Only he could tell me who was responsible for that massacre. If I don't find out who it was, it will probably happen again. Surely you wouldn't want that. I wouldn't. But I can't betray the sanctity of the confessional. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll try to think up some way of helping you. Suppose we talk it over in the evening, in the tavern, over a cup of good wine. Maybe we'll come up with something. All right. Thank you, Fona. Vale, pues parece que estamos en un problema porque el tío no nos quiere decir nada porque es secreto de confesión, pero es el único que parece que sabe cosas. Entonces estamos bien jodidos, tíos. Vamos a ver si en la taberna el tío... El tío cambia de idea, o yo que sé, o lo emborrachamos hasta que nos cuente todo, o yo que sé. Pero bueno, tenemos que esperar unas horas. 
No sé si hay que esperar hasta, hasta las 10. Como no nos dicen exactamente la hora, dice hasta cuando anochezca, pues oye. Vamos a probar y vamos a ver si... Si ahora a las 10 está el tío en el... En el en la taberna. Y si no está, pues esperamos un poco más o un par de horas más. Y cuando esté, pues oye. Vamos a hablar con él. Vale, pues... Este noche y... Bueno, no se ve muy bien nada, pero creo que no está el tío aquí. Vamos a ver si está dentro. Ah, mira, está ahí. ¿Y la chica está? ¿Con, cu ¿Con cubina? ¿Cómo? ¿El tío este tiene una churri? Pero si es cura. ¡Hostia! Jesus, what do I have to do to get a drink here? I'm sorry I can't tell you everything. But maybe we can work something out. But first I'd like to hear something about you, my son. With whom do I have the honor? Where are you from? I'm from Scarlet's. Oh, I'm sorry. What about your kin? They're dead. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Here, we'll drink to them. It must have been terrible. It was terrible. It seemed so pointless. We had no warning. They just appeared and began the slaughter. God knows why. They killed anyone who didn't make it to the shelter of the castle. My parents, my girl, even the Deutsch who was on Sigismund's side. I didn't make it to the castle. I wanted to try and help my parents, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fled to Townberg with the Cumans on my heels. They almost killed me. They slaughtered people in the surrounding villages. There was a pile of bodies in front of the church in Rovno. Folk who tried to take refuge there, but they... they... My poor child. May God grant them eternal rest. And how did you come to get this assignment? I'd have expected Sir Hanish to send that old grouch, Bernard. You think I'm too young for the job, Father? I do, to tell the truth. Well, I can only apologize for my lack of gray hair and gout. Now the most important thing. What actually happened at Noyo? The good folks here about are saying all kinds of terrible things. But I take most of it with a pinch of salt. The rumors aren't exaggerated this time, unfortunately. The Neuhof stud farm was raided by bandits, but they didn't come to pillage or even take the horses. They only wanted to kill. They maimed the horses and slaughtered some people. I'm sure they would have killed more, but the bandits quarreled among themselves and broke off the attack. And judging by what's left of our Lubosch, they're still settling accounts. I see it's every bit as bad as people claim. Dreadful. Well then, Here's to those poor souls who had to die so pointlessly and so terribly. I've told you all about me. Now it's your turn, Father. You don't look much like our parish priest at home. I noticed you're pretty handy with a sword. I wouldn't expect that of a man of the cloth. You know what they say. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. But this is a bit more mysterious than others. Let's just say I haven't always been a priest. Fate led me to places where affairs were settled by force. These days, of course, it's just a bit of exercise to keep me in shape. Well, we've had an agreeable chat, but now let's get down to business. So, about this confessional seal. Do you really want more innocent people to die? Henry, that's not how it works. There are matters in which you can't make exceptions because if you do it once, you'll forever be tempted to do it again. If people stop believing in the church because their confessional secrets are betrayed, they won't trust anyone, and that's worse than even the most hideous crime. Oh, you're just making excuses. The people who say the church is corrupt are right. You don't care about anyone, only your own comfort. I'm sorry you see it that way. Really sorry. You've no idea how wrong you are. I always wondered about the things a priest tells his congregation. Where else do you get the ideas for your sermons? Well, Ujitz isn't Prague. 
It's not enough to instruct people. They have to be entertained, too. If I only read from the Bible, I'd soon be preaching to an empty church. Our priest wasn't exactly a bard. So what do you preach to your flock about? It has to be something topical. Condemning vices. And, of course, describing them in detail. A tongue lashing about the two popes goes down well these days. And stories from real life, with a nice moral to them, are popular as well. Especially if they're about fornication and similar scandalous vices. Can you give me an example? Well, recently a priest by the name of Jan Hus started preaching in Prague, in the Czech language, and the people liked it. I hear he always has a full house. A journeyman who heard him told me what Hus is preaching, and I like the sound of it. I'm thinking about putting it in my own repertoire. What's so amazing about it? The preaching of Master Jan Hus about Mother Church, the lamentable wealth in which the church is drowning has turned to poison. And nearly the whole of Christendom is contaminated. Just like a flock of hungry ravens, they settled on this land to devour every grain of gold and silver. They know no mercy. Their hearts are corrupted by longing for wealth. And they shamelessly profit from everything. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. What if the devil himself were to pay? Would he ascend to heaven too? With such money gained from the poor, they buy beautiful horses to ride and needless servants to pamper them. They gamble at dice and dress their whores in expensive furs. While Jesus Christ walked barefoot and had no place to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Amen. Well, this Jan Hu's character is quite a rebel. Oh, the congregation will love it. I don't doubt it. Let's drink to that. Funny. That last bit reminds me of someone. What do you mean? My situation is completely different. Huth preaches against the prelates and the clerics who are robbing the poor. Look at me. I don't have a pot to piss in. I'm no better off than the folk I preach to. I'm one with them in poverty and suffering and everything that troubles them. I drink with them and curse those stuffed habits in Sassau Monastery. One beer. Don't you think it's a bit odd when someone boozes and lives in sin with a woman and then criticizes the Pope for, be, for, for debauchery? No, I don't. What do you think of this Jan Hus? He's certainly a wise man. A little overzealous for my taste. If he got out of Prague and came here for a look, I'm sure he'd stop condemning drinking and lying with women. Where can I find out more about his teachings? My pleasure. You like it? I copied down some of his sermons. If you're interested, you can read them at my presbytery. Here. What do the common folk think of it? They like it. They're happy to hear someone say what they think themselves, but are afraid to say aloud. Chicken things that make them angry. God and they're calling for change. In a few years, it'll have grown beyond control. You mark my words, the people will rise up and the church will be shaken to its very foundation. Yeah, unless they burn him at the stake first. <laughs> Nonsense. They can't burn a master of the most respected university in Europe. Thanks for the sermon, but I think I've been morally uplifted enough. Oh, it's getting quite late. What are your plans, Father? What do you suppose? We have a drink, of course. Ah, that sounds like a good plan. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Jako 
Enough of this. Bailiff, come on over here. Sit down and have a drink with us. Don't vex me again, Father. It's three hours past dusk, and curfew is long gone. So what? So I'll have you all whipped and put in the stocks, and I'll write a letter to the bishop about you, priest. Well, nothing to worry about then. Everyone knows the only one around here who can write is me. <laughs> Enough! Men! Throw them out. You looking for a fight? Henry, back me up. Okay, come on, man. Dios, como, como me estoy riendo con el. <laughs> Cómo me estoy riendo con este episodio. Hemos emborrach nos hemos emborrachado con el cura y ahora estamos pegando una paliza al merino y a los colegas. Habéis visto que le acabo de reventar a hostias ahí sin... <ríe> sin darle tiempo a nada. Y es la mejor manera, que no puedan ni respirar. Vale, nos hemos cargado dos. Creo que solo falta el merino. O, o son dos. No sé. Este es el cura. Es que no se ve nada. Aquí está. Se ve tan borroso, tío, que. Que no sé. <ríe> no sé a quién pegar. Creo que es este el merino. Creo que ese es el merino. Vamos a pegarle. Toma. Ay, no puedo. Es que está tan borracho que no puede pegar. Venga, ahora. Toma, cabrón. Toma. Venga, venga, ahí. Pumba. Venga, otra vez. Inténtalo. Venga, tú puedes. Oh, venga. Ahí, otra. Venga, otra vez. Qué bueno, tío. <risa> es la hostia. Este episodio está siendo la hostia, tío. I'd love to. And Henry too, I'm sure. Right, Henry. Stop that nonsense. Are you out of your mind? What will people say? They can say what they like. What do I care? What do they do to me? Watch the step, my dear. Careful, you don't hurt yourself. Godwin, you're a buffoon. What? What the hell are you doing? Here we are. Look at this beauty. Oh. Oh. We can't do this, can we? Who says? Get ringing, wench. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> ah, bloody hell. <laughs> and now, my dears, comes the climax of the evening. Godwin, you old goat. Come here. The priest has mounted up. What do you say, Henry? Shall we take a little ride of our own? Dios mío, este episodio, tío. El cura este es un depravado, cabrón. Qué bien se lo pasa, tío. <ríe> eh, un borracho, un fucker. <ríe> y ahora está persiguiendo ovejas, tío. ¿Qué le pasa a este pavo, macho? <ríe> ¿Y, qué, ¿Y qué tenemos que hacer nosotros? Sí, nosotros ya, normal. 
Well, I have to say that was a fine evening. Godwin, you beast. Get up. Do you hear me? Wake up, you drunkards! Oh, fuck it out. Oh, oh, where the... Oh, what the... Oh, who the hell are you? Oh, Henry. My great friend, Henry. Didn't we have a wonderful time? Well, you oh. certainly did, you old lecher. Now you better pull yourself together quick. You haven't much time. There's some water and something to eat on the table there, but if I were you, I would move my hairy arse before my flock eats me alive. Oh, Stefan in my head. Mm, my guts. Oh, my poor suffering stomach. Oh, what was that woman on about? Before my flock eats me alive. I've forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Where the fuck am I? What the fuck was it? Oh. Mass! Oh shit, I have to say mass. I gotta say mass. You have to help me. Ow! You're the priest. I can't do it in this state. Maybe the liturgy. But I have to give a sermon as well. Oh, this is a disaster. They're gonna excommunicate me. I'd like to help you, but you can. You can do the sermon for me. What? So, first I investigate a murder no one wants investigated. <sighs> then I drunkenly keep the whole town up all night. And now you want me to preach at them from the pulpit? Do you want them to burn us at the stake? No. No, I've got it. Suppose it's Sir Ratzig's protege. You just came from studying in Prague. And you want to share the words of Master Jan Hus, who you recently heard preaching there. Henry, look, from what I remember, we might have overdone it a bit last night. And if the bailiff or someone else complains about me, the bishop's going to have my guts for garters. So I'd appreciate it if you stopped gaping at me like a stuffed squirrel and start helping. You're mad. You're start raving mad. I'm not. It's a perfect plan. It's flawless. <coughs> oh. How about this? If you help me with this. I'll tell you who Lubosch's cronies are. So all at once the confessional seal isn't so sacred? Don't mock me. I won't give you a second chance. Hmm. Well, all right. But I can't make any promises about what will happen. No, neither can I. What do you want me to do, exactly? I'll go and start the liturgy. Then I'll introduce you. You give the sermon I told you yesterday in the tavern, and that's that. No need to drag it out. If it turns out well, I'll tell you what I know about Lubos. Christ almighty. Fine, then. We have a deal. Wonderful. Let's get to it, then. Bueno, pues si no hubiéramos hecho suficientes cosas, eh, ahora tenemos que dar el sermón por el cura. O sea, nos hemos emborrachado, nos hemos acostado con la tía aquella. <risa> el tío este se ha acostado con la concubina, lo cual supongo que es normal, porque es su concubina. Aunque es cura y no debería poder, pero bueno. Y ahora tenemos que ir y hacer de... decir el sermón por él, tío. Qué cabrón, macho. Pues nada, espero que vaya bien la cosa, porque como vaya mal el sermoncito, a ver si después de todo esto no, luego no nos va a decir quién, quién es el asesino de, del tío, porque entonces ya ah, me voy a cabrear, ¿eh? Pero mucho, pero mucho.
never show up. A swill pup. Look at him. He can hardly walk after his capers last night. You were with them, you beast. Just you wait. Look at him. Mother of God. Any minute now, he'd throw up. Animals. I couldn't sleep a wink last night with all that clamor. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Accepit Panem, in Sanctas, at Venerabiles, a manus suas. <clears throat> Hoc facite in meam commemorationem. Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scalitz, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuhof. You might not know that Henry recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. So, Henry, you may begin. Now I'm curious. I'm curious which one of them will puke first. Brothers and sisters, let me get straight to the point. I'd like to talk about the church and how corrupt it is. Boy, is a cheek. One should not believe in the church because the church is not God. God is above all things and the church is but a means to salvation, which the prelates do not care to hear. He's right. It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, humans, hunger, and chaos. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver, they show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned by covetousness. They trade everything. Everything is for sale. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. And the prelates sin and give themselves absolution. For shame, shame upon them. It is the custom of the gluttonous prelates and monks to preach against sin. But what do they know of us ordinary folk? Let us remember the marriage at Cana, where our Lord Jesus Christ himself feasted with the other guests and drank his fill. And when the wine was gone, he performed a miracle and created more. He, whose companions were poor travellers, simple folk, prostitutes and troublemakers, performed a miracle so the feast could continue. Now that's the kind of sermon I like to hear. No, brothers and sisters. Jesus did not condemn alcohol. Drink to lighten the cross you bear in this veil of tears, but not with such abandon that you cannot keep holy the Sabbath. For there should be moderation in all things, and it is not drinking itself that is sinful, but intemperance and beastly indulgence. He's right! Enough about sin, which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you only pay enough coin to Mother Church. What if the devil himself were to pay? Will the bishops tell us he too would ascend to heaven? And what about those bishops? 
They sin without remorse, and with the money grasped from the poor for indulgences, they keep fine horses and hordes of servants to pamper them. They play dice and garb their mistresses in expensive furs, while Christ, the Lamb of God, walked barefoot and had nowhere to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Down with the prelates! Away with them! We're fortunate to have our good father Godwin! At least he's a fair and simple man. God sees what is happening on earth, and he is filled with righteous wrath that those who should seek the salvation of souls instead seek mammon and the idle comfort of lucrative posts. Blessed are the shepherds who share the poverty of their flock, who are as one with you and bear with you the burden of this earthly pilgrimage, who do not condemn your venial sins. Why? All honour to Godwin. Let him drink like one of us. That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. The lad spoke well, considering what a soak he is. He's right, that was. The young man shouldn't drink so much. But the Lord's given him a I'm silver tongue. I don't suppose I'll ever get to Prague. I'm totally nice to him. Well, well, my boy, you have talent, and I can't deny it. And you pulled a thorn from my side. I almost didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. Well, I wasn't the only one. Oh, what's to be done? I'll make it up somehow. So, about our bargain. Although it's a sin, uh, so gluttony, and fornication, God does forgive a penitent. So, what did Limpy Lubosch tell you? Was he at Neuhof that day? Who was with him, and, and, and where are they now? Now slow down. I'm sorry, but he didn't tell me that much. Don't let me down after all I've been through. For you, well, now Lubosch came to me shortly after it happened. And his conscience was gnawing at him. And I must say, uh, in the end, he turned out to be a better man than he looked. He said they'd been hired through some crony of theirs. And at first, they were just to steal some horses. But then it all turned sour, and people started getting killed. And neither he nor his cronies wanted anything to do with that. So they fell out from the gang and fled. Fell out? Yeah, there was a body found in the woods by Neuhoff. Um, that would explain something. Uh, Lubos kept jabbering that he wasn't a murderer, that he didn't want to do it. So I know that Lubos killed the murderer and he's dead too. The trouble is, I need to find the ones who are still alive. I need names and places. Did he mention any of the others? Uh, only nicknames. Uh, he talked about some fella called Riki from Ledechko, Pius, Timmy. Pius. <laughs> That lot are about as pious as I am ordained. Nonsense. You would make an excellent priest. And anyhow, with your skills, you ought to be able to sniff out this Riki from Odechko, right? Well, we'll have to now. There's not much else to go on. Let's hope he's not hanging from the wall, too. <sighs> Indeed. And I'd hate to be excommunicated for nothing. Anyhow, good luck. You watch out for yourself. These people clearly mean business. And I'd like to raise a tankard with you again sometime. Yeah, I'll try. Although I'm not sure I'd survive another night of your debauchery. And if anyone should ask, you heard nothing from me. I'll deny everything. I don't doubt it. Pues genial este episodio de Kingdom Come ha sido genial, super divertido y brutal. Me ha encantado. El mejor sin duda de, del juego, al menos hasta ahora. Espero que a vosotros también os haya gustado. Dadle un like si es así. Suscribíos si no lo habéis hecho todavía. Y nos vemos en el siguiente vídeo. Adiós.